ladies and giants. I mean, big, innit? it? It's a grand auditorium size. Uh, Washburn, as we know, I'm very fond of Washburns. Uh, and this has come in for a very, very common uh, difficulty that people have with acoustic guitars. And you can see this fairly easily that the action, of course, looks like it's been set by our brick. Um, now, usually, the easiest way to cure this situation is by whipping out the uh, saddle here, the bridge, and uh, just shaving a little bit off the bottom of it, plonking it back in, and usually that'll do the trick. But there's a couple of other little checks that you should make before you go ahead with this. Ah, oh, there you are, sorry. Uh, right, so uh, the first thing before you go hacking away at anything is let's have a look at the neck straightness because that will make an enormous difference to what's going on with your string height. And as I hope you can see, we could get a bus in there. We're looking for a sliver, not a great big massive gap. So let's have a look about how to adjust this. Now, as you'll know from other stuff that we've done, generally speaking, uh, you've got a truss rod cover here on your headstock, have you not? And uh, you would uh, whip that off and tighten it up that way. But on this, uh, and, and this is not uncommon for acoustic guitars by any means, the truss rod adjustment is there. Can you see it there inside the sound hole? So what we're going to do first before we... Oh, yes, it's in the, it has come in for new strings as well. Um, so what we're going to do is just slacken off a couple of the strings, get a, get a tool in there and see what happens with the neck straightness and see what the string height is like after that. Now, this one belongs to my buddy Joe. So, Joe, let's hope that your truss rod works. Movement a bit tight. These are probably from around 2005. And there's not, I mean, there's a bit of information out there, but not masses. And what I have found was that these were, in that year, uh, on sale through Walmart, which is the American version of Asda, and they're about <coughs> $500, which is, well, I don't know, whatever that is in quids. Oh, that's even been, that's been, <laughs> the strings on back to front. Never mind, let's have a look at the straightness now. So the string height was previously at, uh, we've, it's had about a three quarters of a turn, which, to be honest, is quite a quite a big movement, uh, I would say. Uh, but of course, you know, all screw types will differ, so who knows? Uh, but certainly, the uh, string height was at the twelfth, two point seven five, before we started turning anything, and we've now got it down to two at the twelfth which is actually just slightly, slightly, slightly less than two there at the 12th. But we still want to get that down a little bit more. I'd be happy with 1.5, but uh, quite honestly, whatever I can get on, do me. And there's a couple of things I want to tell you. So, you've got an acoustic guitar that is just the action so high, it's bordering on unplayable. And the idea is, is that what we're going to do is we're going to take the bridge saddle, and this is an uncompensated, as you can see, it's just totally flat, totally square. And uh, the theory is, is that from the bottom, where it sits inside the bridge, you're just going to get, put it on a flat surface. As you can see, that is a totally flat surface. Uh, profile there and so all you're going to do is you're going to get your bit of your sandpaper and you're going to put that on a h nice hard flat surface and you're just going to rub away a little bit you might have to try it a few times i mean the, the, there is almost definitely an absolute science 
uh, to doing this, as in uh, where your string height sits at the 12th fret and how much material you should remove. But the worst that can happen is that you remove too much material. Well, what do you do then? Well, there are a few answers to this. Uh, answer number one is that you get uh, some sandpaper, some uh, fine grit sandpaper, cut a the tiny little thin sliver off that will fit inside that slot where the bridge will sit, and, you, and that way you've raised the height back because you took a bit too much off. If you don't want to do that, then a new compensated saddle, and by the way, once you've got one that you've taken too much off and you get a new one to your door, then you'll have a much better idea of the depth that is required for your requirements. Required for your requirements. Too many requirements there. Anyway, uh, so uh, a plastic one to your door will cost you about £2.50, and a bone one uh, will cost you about six quid. Again, that's postage included. So, this isn't one that's off the guitar, but I'm going to now remove some material from there because I just want to drop it about a not very much. So, let's do that. Right, I will show you this. Uh, as soon as I slacken the strings, as you can see, the nut uh, just popped itself straight out of place. I will show you what to do with that. Okay. And just another quickie. Uh, as you can see, these uh, base strings here on this side of bit are, are fitted correctly. In other words, the string uh, falls to the right hand side of the uh, capstan here. And on this side, on the treble side, the strings are on the on the right side, and they should be on the left side of the capstan. So this has been so it's had the top three strings uh, incorrectly fitted. Ooh, that's no good. And that is very likely the reason that when I detension the strings that the nut slid straight across. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, well, uh, there's no way really of removing the saddle without uh, uh, removing the strings. And what I find is this antique uh, tool, which I think is for getting carpet tacks out, to be fair, but this is brilliant for removing bridge pins. Uh, the, oh, now, the, I mean, obviously, that is not the only tool that can be you know, you can use almost any damn thing. Uh, you could even use a carefully a pair of scissors just to get it in that notch there and just wiggle that about until the pin removes easily. Like this, as you can you see that coming out? And that comes out quite happily there. And what I will do is I will keep the pins in the same order. Uh, they'll go back in the same order that they came out in. But uh, that, I find, is really, really good for these. Okay, I'll remove those. We'll have a look in a minute. So to remove the saddle, uh, what I like to use is something that's got, you see, these do have a little serrated uh, edge on them, of course, as pliers and any t uh, nozzle ended grips tend to have. So I'm going to see if that comes out nice and easily, uh, just using these. Anything that's got a bit of a grip. Hmm. Uh, no. Too slidey. Right, plan B. Uh, yeah, so uh, these are definitely what I'm going to use. So what I'm now looking for is the highest spot on the bridge. And that's about there. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's remove some material from here. So as you can see, if I hold this up, against this totally flat surface, you should be able to see 
that the bottom of the bridge is totally flat. Therefore, I want to only take the material away on a perfectly flat surface. And all, oh, right, first of all, I'm going to, I mean, you can use a ruler or any damn thing, really, uh, but I'm going to find the highest spot on here and just make sure that I'm not taking absolutely loads off the thing. <sighs> Probably about half a mil, something like that. So we're at 5.7 right now. And, uh, I, and if I can get it down to 5.2, I'll try whacking the thing back in, see what happens. Oh, yeah, just for completeness, this is what I'm doing. I've got this on a totally flat surface and just rubbing away. And I'll measure from time to time. I wonder if anything's happened yet. Oh, that's strange. Seems to have gotten bigger. Come on, carry on rubbing. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do is an initial uh, setup. I've had the fret rocker on the frets, and they are absolutely bang on. Perfectly, perfectly plum. Uh, of course, the nut has dropped off. Then, really, a uh, nut is only glued in place just to stop it dropping off when you change the strings. Uh, so, I will let the strings decide uh, the location that it sits in, and then I'll just put two little spots of. And I know this is not popular, but it is a wise choice, trust me. Uh, I'm just going to pop two little dots of super glue on either side. Uh, because if you use wood glue and then the nut has to come off at, at a future date it will very likely take some of the wood with it but super glue holds everything nice and tightly in place and it won't destroy your instrument uh, the other thing to yeah so these actually came as a freebie apparently these are counterfeit Dario's. Uh, that's what I was told. I have no definitive uh, information on that, but uh, these were a gift, so I'll put those on for the initial setup. And uh, what else? And the other thing is, like I always say, whenever you're doing your string change, check your machines for time. And these are look at that. I mean, they are so. That is so sloppy. So what we do want to do is get the box spanner on there and just nip those up. So I'll do that and then we'll put the uh, put the practice strings on. We'll see what happens. Uh, so uh, whilst I was tightening up the uh, the tuning machines, the D would not actually grab it wouldn't tighten up it wouldn't thread ah turns out uh, the washer was on upside down so whether that was a factory thing or you know something that another human had done at some point and right so crack on okay so we've got the nines on it now uh, just as uh, a test uh, kind of setup so let's have a little listen to that of course uh, a guitar on its back uh, you know like this is not the way to test anything you always need to be in a playing position and i think that we've got mm, somewhere between a look let's have some spectacles so i can see what's going on uh, we've got now at the 12th fret, actually, we've got precisely 1.25, which is what I'd like. So,
Yeah, so that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, plays really absolutely beautifully and really just... <laughs> really just as good as any electric that you would play. So, uh, what uh, we'll do is we'll hang it on the wall overnight and check it out again in the morning. We'll ring Joe and see if he wants to stay with the nines or if he does in fact want to uh, have these. I mean, you know, he can always have the uh, nines on for a bit and uh, then if he doesn't like him, then we'll go for the bronze tens. Sorry, Michael. I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, d d the guitar itself, well, uh, as I say, not a load of information about it, but are they, do you know what? I've not even looked at those. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, so, oh, and it even tells you. Oh, oh, right. So it does tell you on here that you have Grover 18 to 1 tuners, which are very fine indeed. Uh, we've got neck binding and, uh, you know, some nice uh, features around the sound hole. Uh, this is a quilted maple top. Uh, the sides and back, I have no idea because there's nothing to tell me, but that looks like mahogany to me. What do you think? Let's see if we have that there. What do you think? Is that, mah is that mahogany? Looks like mahogany. Looks like sapili. In fact, uh, I, I would go for sapili back and sides, binding all over. There's some electrical stuff going on there. Not uh, going to have a look at that. <laughs> And all in all, I would have to say that that is a jolly nice guitar. And it plays like butter. Okie dokie folks, so that's it for tonight. And what's going on there? Uh, so, right, uh, I'll see you at the weekend. Hmm, not sure what's coming up at the weekend, but you know, there's always something nice at the weekend. All right, adios, amigos. Ta ra. <laughs>